There is an undeniable pleasure in learning the foundational sonic stones of the most iconic artists that music has ever produced. Just as it is a thrill to connect with your friends and family over shared interests and cultural touch points, to hear the first and most memorable music moments of an artist's career is a warming and welcoming notion. Pink Floyd guitarist David Gilmour is one such example. Becoming a senior member of Pink Floyd, first as a replacement for Sid Barrett's drug-deficient performances, and later as a permanent member when Barrett's sanity couldn't be retrieved, Gilmour has cemented himself as a true icon. Unassuming in many ways, Gilmour's technical prowess has made him a guitar hero. It's a delicate dichotomy that one can witness throughout his influences too. Once voted the greatest Fender guitarist of all time, Gilmour's influence with the axe is often underestimated. While not possessing the same flair as some of his heroes, Gilmour's work has always been complex yet earnest. It is an ethos that can be found in his songwriting too. However, the indelible image of Gilmour with a guitar in his hands will always be seared into our collective rock memories. It makes sense then that he should be invited to be a part of an album recommendation slot as part of his Guitar Tricks Insider back in 2017. If Gilmour is suggesting that these five albums are essential listening for any budding guitarist, then you best get them together and onto a playlist as soon as is humanly possible. It's fair to say that on every record suggested by Gilmour, there exists at least one iconic guitarist in the studio. First up is the iconic Hank Marvin of The Shadows and their set of greatest hits. Another member of the foundational players list, Marvin is often cited by Keith Richards as a favourite too, particularly resonating with the British public through The Shadows who were as big as the Beatles in many parts of the country. Marvin's unique guitar style would influence countless bands of the 1960s and can still be a formative experience for any player to this day. I copied, don't be afraid to copy, and eventually, something that I supposed that I would call my own appeared. This was the famous quote from Gilmore when asked about his signature style. Some obvious candidates for such copying can be found in this list. Jeff Beck of the Yardbirds would show young Gilmore that the guitar sound didn't have to be restrictive, and later, as Gilmore found in his own fame, that he shouldn't be afraid to try new paths to reach his end goal. Using one's instrument, you could create new sonic landscapes, something Beck did effortlessly on Blow by Blow from 1975. Another hero of Gilmore's was the empirical Eric Clapton, who enjoyed spells in most of Britain's formative blues groups. Here he joined John Mayall and the Blues Breakers, who also included Mick Taylor and Peter Green at one point in time to provide one of 1966's best albums. Speaking with Relics in 2015, Gilmore noted of the band, All of those guys were incredible. I spent time trying to learn how to play their licks perfectly. I would suggest any younger player should try to sit down and do that. Selecting Dire Straits' his hugely popular self-titled album may confuse some people. However, Mark Knopfler's guitar sound is regarded as one of rock and roll's pivotal turning points. Gilmore said of the guitarist in 1985, Mark Knopfler has a lovely, refreshing guitar style. He brought back something that seemed to have gone astray in guitar playing. From now and until the end of time, Knopfler will be best remembered for his six-string skills. He was always a guitarist by trade, a singer and music video icon by circumstance, channeling his most potent emotions through his signature finger-picking technique. Last, and certainly not least, is the magnanimous Jimi Hendrix and his wondrous second album, Electric Ladyland. Gilmour once famously mixed Hendrix's iconic Isle of Wight performance and would later refer to him as the greatest guitarist of all time. Speaking to the BBC in 2006, Gilmour said, Jimi Hendrix, fantastic. I went to a club in South Kensington in 1966 this kid got on stage with Brian Auger and the Trinity, he started to play the guitar the other way around. Myself and the whole place were with their jaws hanging open. Gilmore was certainly ready when Hendrix's secondary effort hit the shops. With such a wide range of influences and a heap of great music, 
These were David Gilmour's five favorite albums of all time. 